now more than ever, people need to go within and plug into that cellular memory, plug into the divine source, detach as much as possible from the matrix. Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, my very special guest is Jeff Brady. Uh, Jeff has been a guest on our show before, and I've been a guest on his show. I really respect and admire Jeff's work as far as all across the board, bringing out great UFO uh, imagery, and also being one of the the true pioneers as far as uh, pointing out the very real phenomena of UFO mimicry. We're going to be talking about a a variety of issues today, a lot to do with terraforming and climate change, so-called. So without any further ado, Jeff Brady, welcome back to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thank you, James. It's great to be here. Well, give our listeners a brief background on your research into climate engineering or geoengineering and the idea you're examining and how the climate change propaganda could be a cover for for a terraforming operation of Earth. Okay, is an alien race terraforming the Earth under the pretense of an unauthorized geoengineering operation? And loosely defining terraforming would be intentionally modifying the atmosphere, its volatile components, temperature, surface, topography, or ecology, to match a suitable habitat, and I would add also modifying conditions for other operations such as a temporary occupation, genetic harvesting, or underground operations such as mining. And as many of your listeners know, James, climate engineering and its chemical fallout is one of the most wicked agendas imposed on the environment and humanity. These operations are so deceptive and diabolical, many protect themselves from learning more and remain in disbelief while an aggressive climate engineering is deployed night and day in plain sight. However, sinister operations at this magnitude couldn't happen without a network of compliant people behind the scenes from so-called environmental groups, Pentagon generals, propaganda media, NASA scientists, university professors to TV meteorologists, and some of them we've now understood through the work of geoengineeringwatch.org are under gag orders. After a number of years working with anti-geoengineering people, good, good people who were making a difference and bringing awareness to the aerosol operations, There was an interesting consensus. Once we all got together after an event one evening, it it was early summer of 2014, and we gathered at an organizer's home to make some food and and catch up. And that evening, we're quietly talking in a few groups, looking across the Long Island Sound. And these were lawyers, teachers, activist types, engineers. And... A quiet, unofficial consensus was reached that there must be some type of alien, non-human involvement with this ubiquitous aerosol operation. How can it be deployed worldwide all the time in secret? How? You know, this was kind of quietly discussed among us, and we certainly don't wouldn't go public with it. Well, that night I left thinking about The time we all spend in bringing awareness to real-time climate engineering and how these operations are used to create climate change inadvertently or not, and that climate change narrative is used to heavily propagandize populations into the current restrictions being imposed now. So you have this double gatekeeping. You have the barrier of state propaganda, but you also have the alien non-human involvement behind the mask of the climate change narrative. And it's a topic and concept generally kept quiet because if you're bringing awareness to the diabolical aerosol operation of climate engineering and you bring aliens into the mix, you've created an avenue of attack in discrediting and potentially reversing any gains made in bringing awareness. Now, 
That being said, I'm, I'm presenting these ideas in this interview as an organized hypothesis and food for thought. And it's important to point out also that how saturated uh, the public domain has become with citizen journalists dispersing quality information and evidence visually and through documentation about ongoing real-time climate engineering. A lot of work has been done, and this is several years ago. I think some of your listeners will recall. And I want to mention that work of several anti-geoengineering activists who have passed on and dedicated big parts of their life and resources into exposing these diabolical operations. There are Bridget Conroy of Arizona Skywatch, Rosalind Peterson of California Skywatch, Dr. Mike Castle, Michael Murphy, Gwen Scott, author Jerry Smith, and Dr. Ilya Sandra Perlingeri. I know there are more, but I want to acknowledge them right now. And in my opinion, it was so effective what they did and what we all did. There was such massive disinformation launched, a massive disinformation campaign launched to counter it. And that's usually your indicator of how effective you are. Your listeners may recall for several years between 2009 and maybe 2015, gatekeeper outlets published articles probably in the hundreds about climate engineering, playing semantics, or outright denying real-time use of weather control technology while claiming to be researching it as a contingency to climate change, likely caused by the very operations, of course. Now, that time space was about 2009 to 2015, just a swarm of articles and information came out within uh, media outlets. Now, as this aggressive real-time climate engineering continues altering what we perceive to be natural weather worldwide, it also facilitates disaster capitalism models. Part of the reason there's so much deception and bitter contention swirling around this topic is because it's likely a multi-layered terraforming operation. And as part of this transformation, terraform, man-made microwave radiation frequencies dispersed, such as current 4G and 5G, that interfere with the Schumann residence, a natural frequency of the planet which is resonating between their surface and the atmosphere. And the Schumann resonance is also known to perfectly match the human brain frequency. These activists that you mentioned a moment ago, have they come to a similar hypothesis that perhaps there is a non-human element behind this, or uh, is that something that uh, just you and, and the people at that meeting had independently come up with? It's something that people are reluctant to speak of, especially people in the public eye, or have positions uh, and jobs that they they work with people and their you know their faces on a website somewhere people are afraid to be ridiculed in that way and i understand that it's it's not easy yes it's a rock and a hard place scenario because if you follow the information in an unbiased manner and you take it to where it leads you like you pointed out the very information that you find for those who are not familiar or up to speed with this level of understanding, it could tend to bring discredit upon the whole venture. So, you know, if one wants to ensure that there is widespread knowledge of this, then they have to walk a fine line between, well, how far do I go? What do I tell them? And, uh, you know, being remaining in integrity. Uh, now, this is a, a ubiquitous operation, and it's been allowed to continue in plain sight, uh, upheld by the flimsiest of deceptions. When anyone can see the activity being conducted overhead, 
what are some of the, the, the ruses or deceptions or uh, the means by which this deception is being maintained? Yeah, th- thanks for asking that, James. It seems like something here is beyond the control of the cryptocracy or whatever you want to call them, the cabal. And one way to cause a smokescreen is a campaign of constant cognitive dissonance. The well-funded lies surrounding the topics of climate change and climate engineering are the reason why the topic has been revisited for the last decade on the radio show and other news that I've, I've hosted. Video evidence of climate engineering Aerosol operations being conducted in the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and many other countries have been witnessed by millions of people. However, there is an attitude of willful ignorance among climate scientists and researchers that needs to be understood on many levels. What's clever and pernicious here is that the very topic of being environmentally mindful has been hijacked. The reality is anti-geoengineering activists care deeply about the health of the environment and that's why they sound the alarm about the human health and environmental effects of spraying soft metals such as aluminum into the atmosphere and using electromagnetic technology to heat and control weather system boundaries and jet streams. The truth is most people have known Climate engineering is causing extreme weather and that it's being used to further a false green agenda that has already started to erode human rights and be used to lock in a dystopian surveillance state. It's taking form in the UK and now Canada with illegal laws limiting travel. This level of information won't be properly broadcast. Even if it is through some accident, it will likely have a minor effect. Again, most articles written about geoengineering in the last eight years and recently, James, in the New York Times will patronize the reader with a circular narrative offered by captured scientists, usually from institutions such as Cornell, Stanford, and Harvard. Years ago, people such as David Keith and other scientists were openly discussing geoengineering as a last resort to mitigate the warming of the climate using soft metals such as aerosolized aluminum to be a reflective layer in the upper atmosphere. However, the claims are these operations are only contingencies and haven't been deployed. David Keith's group I think it's called the Keith Group. It's partially funded by the Gates Foundation. He repeats the mantra that geoengineering could work if we were to deploy, but we need to be careful, etc. The full denial of the ongoing aerosol operations uh, are on his site. And this is this is what it reads. We are not now involved in outdoor experimentation, th- though we are indeed actively developing proposals for field experiments. This experiment will proceed only if it is conducted in a fully transparent and public manner, and only if it passes a comprehensive independent study safety review. The experimental plans, operations, and results will be publicly available and freely usable. No, no patenting. And then it gets into the chemtrail conspiracy theory. This is on his site Because of the apparent similarities between the proposed implementation methods for albedo modification, such as injecting reflective particles into the stratosphere, and the alleged methods for producing, quote, chemtrails, some people have linked the notion of chemtrails to the study of albedo modification. There is no evidence for the existence of chemtrails. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. The claim that there is a large-scale secret program to spray materials from aircraft is extraordinary, yet all the evidence we have seen to date has been very weak. The most common claim is simply that aircraft contrails look, quote, different without any comparative analysis. And listen to this sentence, James. This is as convincing as saying that alien beings walk among us in disguise as people because some people act very strangely that's on their site okay it's amazing that look i know it's a joke and they're mocking people but it's still in the subconscious and in the zeitgeist 
Well, just to interject for a second, they may have to revise that because in the recently released national intelligence findings, whatever they call it for 2022, mm-hmm. they postulate in that official government document that aliens already are among us now, right? Wow. We know they've been around for a long time, but right. so it's an example of speaking with a forked tongue, speaking out of both sides of the mouth mm-hmm. simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but please continue. Uh, and just one last paragraph here uh, on their site. This is the Keith Group site debunking what they call chemtrails or the existence of chemtrails. If there really were a large scale program dumping material from aircraft at the scale described, there would have to be a large uh, operating program to manufacture, load, and disperse materials. If such a program existed at the scale required to explain the claimed amount of chemtrails, it would require thousands or perhaps tens of thousands of people. It would be extraordinarily hard to keep such a program secret because it would be so easy for a single individual in the program to reveal it using leaked documents, photographs, or actual hardware. Well, I believe that has happened already. But again, this kind of supports non-humans being involved in the operation. What the researchers at Geoengineering Watch found flying through a trail left by a chemtrail aircraft catching the particles in the trail to be tested, uh, well, they found the soft metals were nanoparticles such as graphene oxide, the same component put into the poison jab, When honestly evaluated, the experimental gene therapy shot was forced on to the population from a corrupt power, again tracking back to the Gates Foundation and the cult known as the WEF. And if you've done a little research on the WEF, WEF, you've seen they like wearing their robes and their space age looking clothing. And to this day, real time climate engineering remains the most secretive topic worldwide. No elected politician has directly responded to implicit questions about real-time climate engineering operations conducted in the lower atmosphere that millions of people are witnessing. None. How can that be? And just to reiterate, as unearthed by geoengineeringwatch.org, NOAA and related government agency contractors are known to be under gag order. They can't speak about the massive ongoing climate engineering, but I suspect it goes deeper than that and into an alien terraforming agenda. And you may remember John Kerry recently saying, I think it was at the Davos event this year, regarding climate change, he says, Quote, I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about saving the planet, end quote. He also says something to the effect that they, the representatives that make up the WEF mob or whatever organization that was at Davos, that extraterrestrials had sent them there specifically to do that job or words to that effect. I'm I'm paraphrasing. So he's implying that they are this chosen group of people, this priesthood, if you will, that have been delegated by aliens to affect changes which will combat this woo-woo climate change fear, which they're imposing on everyone. And uh, just to make a quick point, the hypocrisy is stunning because the abuse meted out to Graham Hancock and others for their findings, which I I feel are valid, that this notion of catastrophism is the norm on this planet rather than uniformitarianism where everything stays the same geologically, uh, stays the same for millions and millions of years, whereas the geological proof and the the accounts and lore from cultures the world over strongly suggest that, and the archaeological proof strongly suggests that this planet is subject to periodic, cyclical, celestially driven cataclysms. Now, what are celestially driven cataclysms if not radical climate change? <laughs> so, right. so they deny that Graham Hancock's information is is valid, but 
in essence, they're denying climate change themselves. It just shows the utter hypocrisy of the people or the beings that we're dealing with. In, indeed. And uh, they very well could be ambassadors uh, for non-humans who are you know, involved at, at those higher levels orchestrating things. And the fact that Kerry himself is the skull and bonesman, the occult rituals he and his mob get into uh, behind closed doors, there's nothing remotely human about some of the activities that they get up to. Uh, as far as some of the anomalies are concerned, can you talk a bit about the speed, velocity of some of these chemtrail generating airplanes and other anomalies which suggest that there's something more going on than simple uh, airliners or air tankers converted for, for such purposes. Right, and, and that points to what was mentioned in the Keith group. Like many sky watchers, I've caught on video UFOs flying near or in the same direction as the spray aircraft, and also video of UFOs flying right at these aircraft that are releasing aerosol. And you can call them planes, but it's been shown for years now that these aircraft glitch out and take the form of round illuminated shapes and wingless tubes. They become transparent, and I've caught one on video taking the form of a disc. They're morphing in shape all while spraying, and that right there is a huge existential threat that causes many people to quickly dismiss the topic. Okay, so you have an aircraft spraying, but then it's not an aircraft, but it's still spraying something. Uh, people don't want to talk about that. Another significant factor often overlooked is the speed of the aircraft, as you mentioned, uh, releasing uh, persistent aerosol trails. It can at times appear uh, traveling far beyond the standard passenger jet speed of 550 miles an hour, 550, 600 miles an hour. These aircraft <clears throat> appear to be moving at least, at least double that speed. Not only that, they're traveling in pairs, in threes, and at times caught on video in attack formation, leaving these persisted trails, not regular contrails. And when you watch these aircraft through binoculars over hours at a time, you will see them seemingly appear out of nowhere. And of course, that could be, you know, from turning on the spraying devices and suddenly appearing visible. But keep in mind, James, these aircraft can become invisible. I've caught it on video. And James, maybe you can pro provide some links to the videos on your site, uh, the ones I sent. Okay. Listeners, if you have time and can stomach it, watch the operations carefully through high-powered lens. If you have time to do that, you'll get confirmation after confirmation. I was also told, James, that the speed of the aircraft was significant to a certain dispersal pattern and a certain particulate aerosol. So you have to factor that in, you know, when you're looking at the wild uh, speed of these aircraft, that doesn't mean, of course, they're of alien origin, but this anomaly adds to the non-conventionality non of the aerosol aircraft. It's also known that technology exists to conceal the aircraft's visibility in the sky, and this could be causing distortions. If there are holograms concealing an unconventional spacecraft, then you may see the distortions as the object is moving away from you because the light reflecting from the false image will take longer to absorb into the camera sensor, allowing it to pick up anomalies. So that time delay is valuable for revealing fake aircraft on video. And then you look at the cost of keeping tens of thousands or more aircraft in the sky, releasing aerosolized soft metals constantly now for at least 20 years worldwide. These operations have been documented in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, United States, Europe, and the UK region. Are they spraying heavily in other regions, such as South and Central America, China, and Russia? I haven't seen a lot of footage of that, but who knows? 
I'd be particularly interested in knowing, and there has been some information suggesting this, that even in relatively remote or quite remote places, like out in the middle of the ocean and out in remote places of, of desert and, and mountainous terrain where there's sparsely populated regions, this is still going on. What are your thoughts about that? Have, have you um, looked much into that aspect of it? Yes, uh, specifically over the Pacific Ocean near the west coast of North America. And I've seen many satellite images of evidence of persistent trails and and a, a lot of shenanigans going on modifying the the weather fronts and uh we'll we'll get into that a little bit more i guess i think later but that's part of a terraforming operation and you know not necessarily for you know the existence of a particular alien life form to be able to sustain itself, but maybe to modify particular areas of of land masses uh, to get into mining or, or things like that. Can you talk about the interview you did with Italian sky watcher and geoengineering researcher uh, known as Tanker Enemy? Some of your listeners may remember uh, this YouTuber from Italy. He changed his name on YouTube. Uh, I think it's to his name. It's Italian. I, I should have remembered it, but I don't. Uh, but I remember him as a uh, tanker enemy, a very thorough researcher. And I think he was a musician and photographer. He ran a photography business and could not ignore what was going on in the skies above Italy. In July of 2010, I sent him a request to interview him about what was going on. Of course, he didn't he didn't speak English, so we just we did it through text and I translated his response from Italian to English. So I'll go through some of that now. Aircrafts engaged in the clandestine aerosol operations are always without identifying brands and are invisible to civilian radar. And I just want to mention, this is echoed in an interview with Andrew Johnson on In Other News. Uh, Andrew is in the UK, and he used a tracking program to capture transponding data from aircraft flying over his home. And he ultimately concluded the aircraft that were releasing aerosol, persistent trails that spread out in the cloud cover, didn't send out the required transponder data. So I asked Tanker Enemy, do you suspect aliens are involved with these spraying projects? Is this a terraforming project? So this is back in 2010. And he responds, maybe we should think to interdimensional creatures than aliens. The terraforming seems to be implemented to make the environment suitable for living beings whose DNA is based on silicon rather than carbon it is possible to establish the following scenarios. Hostile beings, allies of the armies and world governments, are combated, even if ineffectually and sporadic way, by forces who want to safeguard the planet. This is translated again uh, from English, from Italian to English. And then he refers to um, these balls of light, which often are observed or disturb the, the chemical flights, and, and I've referred to those earlier. And so I ask him, you are among a few who have, who have filmed very strange activity. What is the strangest thing you've seen in the skies? What is the strangest thing you've filmed? He responds, the strangest phenomena that we were able to film is recorded in this video, and uh, I, it, that link is no longer valid, but it shows a Boeing 757 entering a cloud and then disappearing inside of it. And in those moments, you can discern these balls of light coming out of the cloud while the aircraft disappears. <laughs> 